Hello folks and welcome to Friday's Hi-Fi News Etc. And I've got some goodies for you. What have I got? Well, to begin with, we're going to do a trivia question, which I'll give you in a sec. And after that, we've got some Hi-Fi News. I've got four items for you this time around. And to finish off, we have two questions from YouTube viewers. It's going to be fairly long answers, so no hint or tip or anything else. So hang around for those. Anyway, trivia. Now, over the last couple of Friday videos, we've done sort of language, country kind of themed questions. This time, we're going to talk geography. And the question for this one is, which famous rock standard was inspired by what the band could see when they were looking across Lake Geneva on a fateful day in 1971? Once more. Which famous rock standard was inspired by what the band could see when they were looking across Lake Geneva on a fateful day in 1971? Now, I say this all the time, but please don't use Google or the internet. It just spoils the fun. Have a little think. Use your noggin. Check out the video, have a think while you're watching, and I will give you the answer at the end. Hi-Fi News. First up, we have speaker cables from a company called, is it Tiglon or Tion? I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can tell me. speaker cables are from Japan. And Tiglon, if that's what they're called, probably not, has released its new TPL 2000 SP speaker cable range. These speaker cables are now available to order in the UK from a company called Connecting Music Distribution. Patented and apparently unique to Tiglon Japan is their magnesium shielding technology. This is used to reduce and or repel RFI noise. These are high-end products, so expect a high-end price. Tiglon TPL 2000 SP speaker cables start from £2,750 for a 2-meter pair, and the TLP 2000J jumper sets, well, they are priced from £700. And if you want to know more, down below in the description, I will put a link, and I'll put links for everything else as well down there. Next up, we have some high-end isodynamic speakers from a company called Phonica in Italy. Phonica International is an Italian manufacturer of isodynamic loudspeakers, as I say, and they are also coming to the UK from that same company I mentioned earlier, Connecting Music Distribution. Isodynamic technology works on the principle of moving air by using a very thin mylar foil. Due to its very low mass, this film is ultra-fast in its movement response. Phonica offers two different series which feature this kind of design. There's the Flag series and the Legrand, which is a range topper, really. I don't really have much information in terms of prices for those. But Now, the Flag series arrives with the S, M, and L models, and I'm guessing that means small, medium, and large. The M and L variants are also available in either passive or active form. All flag speakers can also be in-wall mounted, if you fancy. So, for example, if you're setting up a home cinema, you could use them for that. Again, we're in high-end territory here. So, I currently have the prices for the flag series, and those prices, well, for the S model, you're looking at £3,500, £7,500 for the M, and 10,000 for the L model. Mm -hmm. 
staying high-end now, and a similar technology from Dan Clark. These are headphones called the Carina, and this isn't the first pair of electrostatics from Dan Clark Audio. That was the, how do you pronounce it, the Voce? I'm guessing it's the Voce. The Carina moves things on a pace, though, by utilizing something called AMTS, or Advanced Metamaterial Tuning System. And you knew that, didn't you? Of course you did. That system is used in the similarly high-end Stealth and Expanse headphones, which aims to create a sort of smoother response throughout the mid-range and higher frequencies, and also a stronger bottom. And we could all do with a stronger bottom. You know it's true. The Carina uses an 88mm driver, which increases diaphragm tension. In addition to that, it increases the uniformity of tension for more consistent, better matched drivers. Speaking of matching, the ear pads are also matched. And as any headphone fan will tell you, the ear pads do affect sound quality. So it does help if they are matched as well. Staying on the ear pads, they are made of synthetic suede to avoid sweat and any of those embarrassing hot spots. On top is a new self tensioning headband design. Again, taken from the flagship Stealth and Expanse headphones. Price for this one, £4,800. And to finish, we're going to go all the way back down on the other end of the price spectrum with a new one from Project. This one is called the Powerbox S3 Phono. Now, I was going to call this one a power conditioner, but I'm not sure if that's actually technically correct. Project called the Powerbox S3 Phono a power filter for your turntable and phono amp. By placing the phono supply outside, of the main component, potential noise and audio signal contamination is avoided, enhancing the actual sound quality. Its two outputs are specifically engineered to power project turntables and phono amplifiers. And I will show on the screen right now those products which are recommended to use with this thing. Freeze the screen and read at your leisure. Now, here is another list which the Powerbox S3 Phono should not be connected to. Again, freeze and read. Inside the Powerbox S3 Phono is DC filtration using low ESR capacitors, linear voltage regulation, and all of that is packed inside a rigid case. The Powerbox S3 Phono spans 103 millimeters by 37 by 106 millimeters and weighs 370 grams on its own. It arrives in black or silver and is priced at 159 pounds. That's your hi fi news. Viewer questions are next. <laughs> First up, we have a question from Chris, Chris Allard83. I hope I've got the emphasis right on that. And Chris says, I am thinking to buy a Blu-ray Panasonic DP9004, which many people, reviewers, are reviewers people, Chris? I'm not sure. Say that it does a very good job as a CD player as well. Is it a decent choice, Mr. Audiophile Man? Well, Mr. Chris, that depends on your requirements and your expectations. Why do I say that? Well, there is no right or wrong when buying hi-fi. You buy hi-fi because it suits you, because it fits into your life, and because it sounds good to your ears. So yeah, this Blu-ray player will play CDs and it'll do a job. And if that's good enough for you, then that job is done. 
Now, speaking as one of those reviewer people, I don't think, and this is my personal opinion, that it will sound as good as a top quality dedicated CD player. Why is that? Well, a dedicated CD player has one job, and that's to play CDs. It's a specialist tool, and I'm all for using the right tools for the job. That is, when CD player X was built, the entire build budget was aimed at nothing else but pulling audio from a CD disc and making it sound good. For a Blu-ray player's build budget, well, only part of that build budget is aimed at the task of playing CDs. Most of the budget is geared towards movies, and only part of that is dedicated to playing CDs, a fraction of that, I would say. Tell me, what sort of part quality are we talking about here during CD play? It depends how particular you are about your sound, how much of a priority it is to you, and what you expect to hear from your hi-fi system. To repeat then, sure, the Blu-ray player will do a job, and I'm sure it'll sound okay, if that's the direction you want to move. Just go into this possible purchase with your eyes wide open, and just don't expect sonic miracles from your Blu-ray player. Now, that was a long answer, and there's going to be another one, so settle back and relax, because we have a question from Boss Content, who watched my video review of the DeGritter Ultrasonic Vinyl Cleaner. And Boss Content says, There are some videos I have seen that suggest that after ultrasonic cleaning, the records lose weight. This, of course, must be partly put down to the removal of dirt. But I am concerned that there may be a loss of actual vinyl itself, which I have also heard that with ultrasonic cleaning may be the downside of this method. Several YouTubers have recommended that ultrasonic cleaning be kept to a minimum. I can understand, with my limited knowledge of physics, that the impact on vinyl with the exploding bubbles could do, at least in the long term, damage to the record. Okay, boss content, a long answer for you, but um, I think it's needed. I would say this, when it comes right down to it, no one, and I mean no one, knows for sure. Now, I have spent months, no, I've spent years researching ultrasonic cleaners, and I've talked, I've talked to the vinyl industry itself. Don't know how many YouTubers have done this. I've talked to the creators of vinyl pellets, the stuff that makes vinyl records. I've talked to chemists. I've talked to the guys who make acetate discs for Abbey Road. I've talked to pressing plants. And you know what? Even they don't know. Why? Because ultrasonic cleaning remains a new technology in broad vinyl terms. And yes, cleaning will decrease weight because an ultrasonic machine uses gentle abrasion as part of the cleaning process, which is one of only two methods I'm aware of on planet Earth that will properly remove leached release agent that sits in the grooves of old and even new records. This stuff is used to eject the actual record from the pressing plant so it doesn't stick, so it's not a sticky gooey mess and they have to go at it with a, a bit of a shovel to get off. That's what Release Agent does. It comes from within the PVC. It's part of the recipe of the PVC. It's not added by pressing plants. It leaches, it sweats, and it stays in the groove. And no one gets rid of it. The pressing plants don't get rid of it. They haven't got the time. They'd be there forever. They just pick up the record, they stick it in the sleeve, it's on the truck, and it's in your house. It's still there. This stuff hardens over time. It ain't going anywhere until you get rid of it. So there's a lot of that stuff resident in the grooves. And often, specific audiophile pressings, I've heard, they have more of this release agent sweating into the grooves. And let me tell you this, most record cleaners do not remove this stuff. Now, if you're able to get rid of this release agent properly, then I'm not surprised there's a waste reduction. Now, 
Your comment followed my DeGritter ultrasonic vinyl cleaning machine review. So, to stay on topic, I've asked DeGritter about this very point, and it said, and I quote, In 2017, we run some long exposure tests with our ultrasonic generator, and we studied the record surface under an electron microscope in the University of Tartu, which is in Estonia, which is where DeGritter live. And we found that when water temperature is managed and the record is moved in the cleaning medium, then no damage can be seen on the record surface. Moving the record prevents hot spots, and it's the hot spots that cause the issues. From then on, we have implemented small band frequency sweep functionality on our ultrasonic amplifier, and that further improves the cleaning energy distribution, and again, prevents any hot spots from forming, which is a good thing. In addition to that, well, I refer you to my previous answer, and that is, I recommend using the right tools for the job. A specialist vinyl ultrasonic cleaner, like the DeGritter, that uses a higher frequency than normal, something like 120 kilohertz. Now, this is the same frequency used to clean precision optics, circuit boards, and even implants. These are items which are prone to damage if handled incorrectly. And that's what they use to clean these items, an ultrasonic cleaner at 120 kilohertz. This frequency produces smaller bubbles, which find it easier to get into the tiny grooves, but they also produce lower kinetic energy, which is very gentle on the vinyl. Again, the right tools for the job. Now, before I go, I still recommend cheaper DIY ultrasonic machines, which use a lower frequency, but they are still a great way to get into the whole ultrasonics game if you're on a budget. I've used various types over the years and during long-term and intensive cleaning sessions, and I have found no evidence of vinyl damage. In short, and after that super long answer, well, I really wouldn't worry about it. Now, while I get my breath back, let's have a look at the answer to the trivia question. And the question is, which famous rock standard was inspired by what the band could see when they were looking across Lake Geneva on a fateful day in 1971? And the answer is, smoke on the water. The members of Deep Purple were in Geneva to record their new album in 1971, when they saw the casino in Montreux catch fire. This was during a concert by the one and only Frank Zappa. This inspired them to write Smoke on the Water, which became their signature song. So now you know. And that's your lot. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And if I could ask you down below there somewhere, if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons, if you haven't already done so, it would make me smile gently, but in a civilized manner, I would say. If you also want to look down there as well, if you could support me on Patreon, it would help to keep this channel alive because it funds this channel. And there are lots of exclusive bits and bobs over there in terms of video and features and stuff. Check it out. You might find something of interest. Also down there are links to my Facebook group and you're welcome to join that, plus my website. Check it out. There's stuff over there you won't see over here. And there's other links to other social platforms, social media platforms, I should say. So, is that right? It is, isn't it? Social media platforms. So, all down there. Anyway, I'll be back on Sunday with... Is it a review? Yeah, it's a review. It wasn't last week. It was the uh, archive backup thing, wasn't it? Whatever that was called. And Sunday we're going for a proper review. So check that out because it's a bit of a weird one. It looks different. <laughs> well, you see for yourself. Until that time, folks. See, I've started already. Bye bye for now. <laughs>